We have another great video for you today. We're gonna throw some education at you. We're gonna set up some isopod cultures and show you how we do that, but also we're gonna talk about some brumation. It's pretty important, so stay tuned. So we started uh, fooling around with making our own ABG mix that uh, we might be actually making it for sale if we like it. Uh, running some tests with it right now. But this is a, a mix of tree fern fiber, um, orchid bark, sphagnum moss, um, pea moss, a couple of things. You know, we're going to stack it out with some calcium because it's for isopods and uh, some leaf litter and springtails of course because we got to keep the mold down. So I mean we're new with isopods so if you have any tips for us or any suggestions let me know but you know I'm trying to figure some stuff out here so we'll see what's going to go down. So here's our mix. I got about about an inch, inch and a half of a layer. Depending on the isopod species, you know, you might, you're gonna wanna look into the details of that. But we're gonna hit it with a little isopods. I feel like I'm like emerald, like bam. Bam, 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 bam. But anyway, you can see the little jibber jabbers in there. I don't know, mm -hmm. can you? Check it real close. The little guys wandering. Yeah, still. Anyway, they're in here, it's a culture. A very cultured culture of isopod uh, springtails. We'll just. So Ryan says that you know he's uh, we're kind of new to this and all that, but really, you've been keeping isopods for a couple years now, really. I mean, you do. I guess, yeah, but still, I always feel new at something. <laughs> I don't know. Dump some uh, springtails in there. I want to hit it with some calcium because these guys will eat eat some of this soil and we want to have some good good vitamins in there for them so kind of like swiffle that around scruffle scruff, it you know swiffle it up scruffle it around scruffle you're a professional scruffler <laughs> very good very good i'm gonna crumble up some these are live oak leaves Crumble up some of these guys, they'll eat these too. Now, do you have to buy your leaf litter? Dog, you can just go outside, pick some up off the ground. As long as, you know, there's no pesticides being used or anything, stuff out of your yard is just fine. Mm -hmm. This isn't. I uh, bought this online, because I'm an idiot. But. <laughs> I mean, you, if you buy it online, you're not an idiot, but... It's fall, and I have a, a yard full of... Leaves right now. White oak leaves right now that are just going to waste. It's all just dollar bills getting blown away. And I want to leave some, you know, larger ones, because I want some stuff for them to hide and all that jazz. That was a perfect opportunity to use our new scissors, but you skipped it. <laughs> So right here we got about a hundred plus zebras we got from our, our buddy at Port City Pets. Port City Python, Port City Pets. What's he going by these days? Pets. Pets. So there's a lot in here. I'll zoom in real quick to hold real still they can get a good shot of uh they look like. They're cool. Zebras. So this is going to be their new home. Just do a little. <laughs> kind of like. Jimmy Jam it all over the place. Nothing sticking in there. And then we got a nice little piece of cork bark. It's about three hundred thousand dollars worth right here. <laughs> Put that guy in there, because they will love to hang out on that as well. 
and we're gonna hit it with a little moisture. Depending on the species, they like you know some like it a little bit wetter, some like it drier, some want higher ventilation, others don't. Um, generally speaking, I only wet down one side of it. That way they can go dry on one side if they want and you know kind of pick their poison, so to speak. There you go. Hopefully, these guys thrive in here. And uh, we're thinking about maybe making cultures of these up so we could sell them to you guys if you're into it. So come see us at Battlefield. Is this going up before Battlefield? Yes. It is. Come see us in Battlefield, Pennsylvania. Mm hmm. All so, right. So here's my, like, this is where I started with isopods. I took a cleanup crew, which I think were like tea scabber, like lotto mix, I'm pretty sure is what it's called. And you can see all these different colors here and there's dwarf whites and also there was springtails in there I actually threw some uh, what were they Spanish oranges that Ben got I didn't know what to do with it I just threw them in here they're kind of shiny <laughs> uh, faster I think it's this one yeah anyway so this was supposed to be for um emperor scorpions and the adults emperor scorpions i had in here died they I, I think they were just old but then i just kept you know feeding these guys and this thing blew up and like everywhere you look in here it's just like ridiculous amounts of isopods everywhere i love it it's like crazy it just fun to come in here and watch them all skitter around anyway so we got these guys giant orange they're actually pretty big look at the size of that oh yeah for an isopod that's pretty big so that's cool so we're just playing around with this stuff having some fun with some bugs that's it So when we start talking about brumation, we start talking about either colubrids or our blue tongue skinks for what we have right now. So we're gonna show you our blue tongue skinks a little bit and just a couple holdbacks. And then also we're gonna explain why it's important to brumate the animals. So let me start off with our northerns that we're holding back here. So this is a northern blue tongue skink. And uh, this is one of our beautiful holdbacks. I'm just gonna run through them real quick. I'm not gonna take a lot of time to show them off because we love them, but. We don't want to freak them out too bad. So some of these, all right. You forget sometimes until you see them and then you realize why you want to hold them back so bad. So look at this guy. Man, that banding is ridiculous. This is a beautiful one. I'm stoked that we held the, that we're holding this one back. All right. So let's talk some brumation. With we have northerns and easterns that we keep. Northerns generally only need a little bit of a temperature drop to cycle them. So we keep them at about a 95, 98 degree hotspot during the summer time. You know stuff like that when it's hot out. When it's cool, we just basically unplug their heat. Um, and then they drop to what the room temperature is, like 75 to 80 degrees. It'll start to kind of dip a little bit lower than that. Um, we find that that works for us, uh, with the Northerns anyway. Some people will drop them into the upper 60s. We don't suggest going much lower than that. Can they handle it? They probably can. In the wild, um, sometimes they will have some really cold nights where it'll get down that cold. And Northerns... You know what happens in the wild is that the ones that survive those cold nights live and they they you know procreate and then there's a bunch of really strong babies that grow up and you know they can survive that kind of temperature swing however 
there are some that will die during the winters. So we don't like our animals to die, so we don't dip them down into that low, especially if we think that we don't need to. So we'll dip ours down into like 75 maybe, uh, kind of the lowest. Sometimes it might dip a little bit less, but not much. So that's what we do with the northerns to dip them into brumation. And what brumation really is, before I talk out of school here, is like a hibernation. So there's almost three months a year where the blue tongue skinks will stop eating, they'll hide and just like burrow and hang out and like sleep for like three months. So they're not really burning much energy and um, they don't need to eat, they don't like do anything like that. So they kind of just shut down. And then when you warm them back up, when it starts to become summertime again, that's when they start going into the breeding. So this is like a temperature cycling or seasonal cycling that we do with blue tongue skinks to help them to breed to, so that they know when it is time to start breeding. And that's what works for our northerns. Now our easterns on the other hand, we found that you have to get them pretty cold. So in the wild they'll drop down into the 30s sometimes. Uh, we don't get them that cold, I don't think that you need to. We did a pretty good job this year of producing easterns. Um, so what we do is we, we actually built a brumation room and I'm going to show you guys that in a minute. But the Eastern blue tongue skinks will turn off their heat for a few weeks. And now with the Northerns, you don't want them to eat really. And, and so we take away the food, but it doesn't get cold enough for them to where their organs shut down. The Easterns actually gets cold enough that their organs shut down. So you want to make sure that there's no food in them when they go into brumation. So you stop feeding them for like two weeks before you really start to drop the temperatures too cold. You know, like we, we unplug the heat it gets into that 75 degree range. They start to realize, you know, something's going on and you stop feeding them. So it goes like two weeks or so when they don't get any food. Then we'll slowly start to turn down the temperatures. We'll start to um, get, in, get them colder when we put them into our cold room. And then we'll drop our cold temps down into the mid 50s. So 55 to 60. It may fluctuate up and down a little bit, um, but it's not too bad. So one of the things we learned uh, after doing this for a while is that sometimes the humidity gets a little too high when you're in the cold room. Uh, our first year, the humidity was like 50, 60% in the room and in the substrate, it might've been even a little bit higher. And that I think is just too high for the Eastern blue tongue skinks when they're in brumation. Um, after that year, we've kind of realize that there might be something else going on that we don't we don't want that to happen. So since then, we've done some things to change that and change the humidity in there. Whether that's, you know, uh, having higher ventilation or a dehumidifier or using a different type of substrate. Um, there's different ways to make the humidity go down in the room. But you think about it, if in a cold room or a refrigerator or a freezer, there's condensation, there's humidity, and that happens. And uh, you just gotta be careful. We want it to run right around 30%, I think, during uh, brumation for the Eastern Blue Tongue Skinks. So with that being said, let's show you guys what the brumation room looks like. I don't think we've ever shown anybody what the brumation room looks like. So why don't you guys come on over there. Let's go do it. All right, guys, so let's go in here to the brumation room. So this is the brumation room. It's not very large. We didn't have a lot of space. We actually built it in Ryan's garage. So um, you guys can see we have an air conditioning unit there. We have a cold bot and a camera. And I'll explain what the cold bot does and how this works. Um, it's a cool bot then. Cool bot. Cool bot. The cool bot. We have some racks here that we have setting up where our skinks are going to be going into. We're using Aspen this year. And uh, yeah, so this is what it looks like. There's a bit of storage in here because we don't need that big of a storage of a cold room just yet. So we have a little bit of storage space in here. And uh, yeah, so let's explain how this works. So how we build the cold room is we just built a stick room in the garage with, you know, two by fours and stuff. And we insulated it really thickly, you know, an R35. We have insulation on the outside and we have thick, like two inch, I think, pink in insulation on the inside. Then we foamed every crack and crevice that we could. Okay, so that being said, once you build that space, we also have a window unit, air conditioning unit in it. It doesn't have to be very big. And um, actually probably the smaller the better, I would say. You'd say to me, Ben, air conditioning units can't get cold down to into the 50s. That doesn't make any sense. Well, here's the way how to do it. We bought a cool bot. So it's, it's a, if you look up cool bot, we can put it in the description below. 
they it's a an app on your phone as well as a mechanical piece that tricks the air conditioning unit to stay on when it's even colder than what it says it can do the reason is that air conditioning units aren't built to really run at that cold but you're not trying to keep it cold all the time at like 50 degrees but it'll get cold down to the 40s with those air conditioning units this just heats up the thermostat on the unit the air conditioning unit to trick it into thinking that it's 60 degrees when it's really like 50 degrees and then it comes with a cool app and it tells you you know what temperature it's in there now how what the temperatures were over a period of time you can change the temperatures from here um, and you can look at the history so it works out really well and that's what we use to make it so cold in the room and to stay consistent in the room we don't mind a swing to a point you know like if it's 55 degrees and it goes up to like 63 we try not to have it do that but you know if it's that big of a swing it's not that bad in nature it would be like that in the daytime out in nature it would even be warmer uh on most days but it would still drop really really cold maybe in the th the 30s um, it's got a five degree swing pretty consistent yeah. so there's a five degree swing in there with this but the air conditioning unit turns on and stays on for like five minutes and then it shuts off for like an hour and then it turns on for like five minutes and it shuts off so if uh, you have a really well insulated room it doesn't really cost that much to run it we thought it would but it's not so that's how we brewmate and uh then when you uh have some more questions about it you call us ask us we'll, we'll we're glad to talk to you guys about it we want you guys to be successful at breeding blue tongue skinks how long do we keep them in brumation we keep ours in brumation for three months generally uh we drop them down in november which is where we're at now a lot of people do thanksgiving we have friends that do thanksgiving some people drop them down in october uh, we start prepping them for brumation in the end of october and then we actually drop them into the deep freeze we call it uh middle of november so that'll go all the way until january the middle of january and then we start to warm them up and get into the breeding process sometimes they don't breed until february sometime um but you start getting into that process of warming them up uh seeing if they'll eat food seeing when they shed and seeing when they can hit that window where they can breed so if you guys have any questions please let us know uh, this was hopefully a pretty educational video for you guys and we really love our blue tongue skinks and we love our colubrids so uh, you know brumation is is the way to go in a lot of times if you can handle it if you can find it it's hard to say hey let's put a ton of money of animals or even just any animals into a freezer but it's kind of what they need so thank you guys so much for watching I hope that you enjoyed it Please hit the like button down below, hit the subscribe, give us comments, let us know if you are into these types of conversations or if you really just want to see, you know, snakes or, or other things. Let us know what you think. Make sure you guys are watching Herb House Rock. We have some really fun people on there. And uh, yeah, we'll be seeing you on the next one. Hopefully we'll see you guys at Battlefield. Talk to you guys later. We have another great episode for you today. We're going to show you the... Nope. Love that energy. Energy. All right. Yeah. Do you think I should do like a Mr. Rogers? Like we'll we'll call the was it a whistle for the train or do, how did you call the trolley? Then we can have like the trolley going. Did they the, do some like Oakley Doakley or something? No, <laughs> I think that's some Oakley or Doakley. Yeah. No, nope, I think that's something else. Hi, Mr. Mailman. <laughs> Say Matt. Nope, that is that is Blue's Clues. That's not the same. All right, Mr. Rogers, it. Let's do that. Uh.